Hey everyone, it's Mike, and this is Never Normal. It's almost the end of the year, which means it's time for my best of 2022 end of the year list. I'll talk about all the music I loved this year, emo, pop punk, punk rock, you get the idea. Let's get right into it. The Wonder Years, the hum goes on forever. If you're like me and weren't a fan of the last few Wonder Years albums, this one made me a fan all over again. This is the band's best album since The Greatest Generation. It also has the song Low Tide on it, which is not just the best pop punk song of the year, not just the best emo song of the year, but the best rock song of the year as well. Joyce Manor, 40 Ounces to Fresno, another great one from Joyce Manor. Gotta Let It Go and Don't Try are two of the best songs that the band has ever released. Joyce Manor have been giving us great punk rock for well over a decade, and this is another great album from the band. Zachary Ross and the Divine, Rebuilding Heaven. This is a new band from Zachary Ross, one of the singers from Man Overboard. If you liked Man Overboard, you're gonna like this. Angels Don't Kill was one of the songs I listened to the most this year. End It, Unpleasant Living. This is a great melodic hardcore, fast, catchy, a quick listen. It has six songs this EP. Five of them are under a minute and a half. So again, it's a quick listen, but great nonetheless. Hate Keeper is my favorite song. Rest easy, hope you're okay. This is more great melodic hardcore. I really like the band's Sick Day EP that came out last year, so I was really looking forward to this album and it didn't disappoint. Fast, catchy, a bunch of sing-alongs. What more could you want? The Beth's Expert in a Dying Field. What do you get when you mix 90s pop rock with whatever you want to think of as indie music with a dash of emo? You get this album. The album ends with the song 2AM and that's kind of how I would describe the entire vibe of the record. You and your friends at 2AM talking about life and love and it's great. Be Well, Hello Sun. This album has some of the most intense lyrics I've ever heard, and the band mixes that with the sound of melodic hardcore. I'm going to sum up the entire album with the lyrics from Treadless. I never told my dad that I wished I was dead, just one of those talks that we never had, so I just laid awake, haunted, afraid, praying for help that never came. Pick me up, pull me in, I don't know what I have, but what's left I will give. Hello Sun is an intense album and one of the year's best. Ben Quad, I'm Scared, That's All There Is, a really fun, catchy emo album from the band here. Blood for the Blood God is one of my favorite songs of the year. I'm really excited to see what the band does next. Frank Turner, FTHC. So throughout the year, I keep a running list of albums that I liked or bands that I'm interested in. So when I make this video at the end of the year, it's something I can go back to and be reminded of stuff that I might have forgotten. And I was looking at that list for this video and I was like, Frank Turner released an album this year? And yes, he did all the way back in February, which at this point feels like three years ago, not uh, 10 months ago. FTHC is just that, Frank Turner infused with hardcore. Frank Turner also said in interviews that he was inspired and listening to a lot of The Hold Steady uh, before going in to record this album, and you can really hear that on songs like The Gathering. The album also deals with life and love during and after the pandemic on songs like The Gathering, Little Life, and A Farewell to My City. A Wave Across the Bay is one of my favorite songs on the album. It deals with a friend's suicide. It's a very powerful song and a very beautiful song. FTHC just adds to Frank Turner's amazingly consistent discography. With the Punches, Discontent. So obviously I love the music on this album, but I also love the story of this band and the comeback they had in 2022. With the Punches were a band that were around during the emo, easycore, pop punk revival of the 2010s, but they were never the top band in the scene at really any point during that decade. They were always in that second or third tier. They had a few songs that I listened to back then, but I would never have considered myself a hardcore fan of the band. Then they broke up, and then I really didn't think about them at all until I saw that they were reuniting and putting out new music this year. And then I checked out that new music, and I was blown away. I think it's the best stuff the band has ever done, and I think it's the best pop punk release of the year. 
And I love that the band did this at all. It's easy when you're a big band and you break up, you always know that you can reunite years down the line, sell some shows, put out some music, and people are going to care most of all. But here with, with the punches, they had to have thought, what if we do all of this and nobody notices? And in this case, yeah, people noticed. I'm pretty sure that the first vinyl pressing of Discontent, they've all sold out. I was lucky enough to grab a tour exclusive. People are talking about the band online, so it's just really cool to see all of this happen for the band. And speaking of vinyl, I did want to point this out because I think this is really cool. So all of the songs on Discontent fit on one side of the you know actual physical vinyl record. So the band kind of had to decide what to do with a blank side B, and they decided to put six... Uh, younger and new bands onto side B. And I just think that's really cool. I don't know if that's ever been done before. I mean, sure on like compilation albums and stuff like that, but this is a band's, you know, big comeback return and they obviously didn't have to do this and they put other bands on their, you know, comeback release. So again, I just think that's really cool. So I wanted to point that out. It's what I've talked about, you know, a million times on the channel about, you know, uh, these bigger bands in the scene just talk about bring these young bands on tour you know even you know retweets or talking about them in interviews and stuff like that that's how the scene grows uh, in my opinion so it's really cool to see that with the punches uh, did that so I'm gonna have that on the screen somewhere here so you can also check out the other bands uh, or the six other bands that were on side B of the with the punches discontent final I also love the lyrics on Discontent. My favorite song is Almost Everything. It has my favorite lyrics as well. Cleaning up this mess nearly scared myself to death. Now I'm getting better. Started making excuses less. Tried to focus on my breath. Now I'm getting better. There's a lesson to be learned somewhere along the way. I just haven't found it yet, but I'm still searching. I haven't seen any news about whether the band is going to keep continuing to make new music or is this just going to be the standalone comeback release, but after listening to Discontent all year, I really hope the band comes back and keeps releasing new music because I can't wait to see what they do next. That's my list. Let me know yours in the comments. Please like and share the video. Subscribe if you haven't. Follow me on all the socials. Tell all your friends and thanks for watching.